Here we go. Now we're in business. All right. So I got got some stuff to talk about. Some video games I got. Um, getting better from something. I never really felt bad at any point, but I lost my voice. I was real mucusy, and it's kind of just like a slow burn in phases kind of sickness, where I never actually felt bad. Go figure. So. <clears throat> we'll start with some stuff I got from my friend Kyle, and we'll start with the least spectacular. A manual for Final Fantasy IX for the PS1. It's the Greatest Hits version. He's like, yeah, you can just have this for free. And I know I got a copy of Final Fantasy IX. I assumed I had the manual, but it turns out I did it. Should be right behind me. So I've got the black label version of Final Fantasy IX. I assumed I had a manual. I do not have a manual. So, I found a home for it. One's black label, one's uh, greatest hits, but, eh. What are you gonna do? Alright. <coughs> and then, I guess, uh, nah, we'll keep it less. We'll, we'll work our way up to the cooler stuff. Lethal Enforcers for the Super Nintendo, uh, two bucks. Um, Final Fantasy II for the Super Nintendo. I have Final Fantasy III for the Super Nintendo, so that's cool. Got a little bit of a theme going. Um, I'll have to put a new battery in it. Uh, I've tested this out and it works, and I forget if I tested out Lethal Enforcers, but I need to get the fucking Konami Justifier for the Super Nintendo now. Um, can't just not have that. So there we go. We got that. Um, $8 for a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, need to get a battery door for it. Eh. Now I got all the, well, I don't have all the variations because I don't have all the colors, but I, I've never owned a Game Boy Pocket, so... Glad to throw this into the collection. I might take it to work with me. It looks like it could use some cleaning up. There's like some schmutz right here. It does work. Um, don't have a game in it. You probably won't be able to see it very well, but it does work. It looks looks good, but the screen's uh, dirty. It looks like it's got smuts on the inside of it somehow. So I don't know. I have to pry that off, clean it up, and glue it back on or something. I don't know. Um, so that's stuff I got from Kyle. These three items. Uh, paid 12 bucks for Final Fantasy 2. I don't know. Kyle got this really good deal for 100 bucks. Tons of shit. Couldn't begin to tell you. Um, and he's asking decent prices. I mean, he's doing better. I'm doing better than I would buying online or some shithole locally. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'll take it. Um... Recently, Bayonetta 2 came out on the Switch, so you know I got that. Got it on day one, uh, pre-ordered on Amazon. It was $51 for some reason. Brand new. Um, comes with the download of Bayonetta 1, which, okay, whatever. Um, I would have preferred it to just be on the cartridge. Um... I guess it's safe to show it. I already downloaded it, but uh, it's got, yeah, uh, whatever. It's got the download code right there. I don't know if I flashed it. I, I won't go out of my way to obscure it because I did already download it. Um, it does have reversible art for Bayonetta 1. Um, it's pretty cool. But I would have preferred either a physical cartridge or it to just be on the little cartridge. I don't know why they did that. And then for Valentine's Day, uh, my lady, my woman, the mother of my child, the love of my life, um, she surprised me with Puyo Puyo Tetris, which uh, as soon as I get, <coughs> well, I don't need to buy a second controller, but I'd like to buy a second controller to um, use to play this two-player. Um, yeah, you can use the two Joy-Cons, but I prefer to use a D-pad for Tetris, not the wiggly little analog stick. And I've tried it with a little wiggly analog stick. 
and I'll make do, but I find Tetris is a much more accurate game if you have a directional pad. So I'd like to get the Pro Controller one of these days. Speaking of which, okay, they're, they're, they're in reach. I forgot, two things I got from Kyle. Um, just a box for a Pro Controller. It's like, do you want it? It's like, eh, I mean, I'll throw it in my collection of boxes and shit. I don't care. And um, Super Mario Cereal. And uh, it's got an Amiibo on the box, and I believe you can just use it. It's nice of Nintendo to do something. So I do have Super Mario All-Star, or All-Star. I do have Super Mario Odyssey, so I can use that. But my girlfriend got this from Target, not knowing that it was a special Target exclusive edition of Puyo Puyo Tetris. And this will probably be the last time I open the box, because I very carefully cut out the plastic and all that shit. But let's take it out. Let's look at our bits. Let's look at our bobbles. Let's see our tchotchkes. Um, it comes with only at Target exclusive decal set. So we got some decals. We got Tetris decals. We got Puyo decals. We got decals. Some might call it a decal. But not here. Not in the as of yet officially unnamed basement zone. And then you got this, the Puyo Tetris keychains uh, that come with the standard edition. And then I found this to be interesting. Uh, to keep it from being crushed, there's just some scrap paper. I don't know why that fascinates me, but it does. I find that to be amusing. Um, okay, so now I can get this put on the shelf. I, I like to wait until I make the video so I keep all this shit stacked up on my desk. And then uh, you know, I got alphabetizing to do. Um, and the last thing I found this week, <coughs> um, I've had my mom babysitting on Tuesdays and Thursdays so I can go swimming. So I went and swam Tuesday, and I was talking to my mom. She's asking, oh, how do I get to such and such uh, antiques place from here? And I was like, oh, how about Thursday after I swim, we just go together. So she was agreeable to this idea. And Thursday comes around, and I'm still feeling like shit. My swim time was like five minutes slow on Tuesday because I skipped three weeks of swimming. I wasn't really sure how my time would go, but my lungs hurt 100%, so I imagine that had a big impact. Um, kept, like, coughing, and the lifeguard just thought I was drowning. Um, <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, change of plans Thursday. I'll, I'll do some running, and then it was rainy, and I've been, like, all congested and gross. So... Uh, I was like, how about we just go to the place? So I did see some video game things, and I snapped some pictures of it, but I can tell you right now, I'm probably not going to put that in the video, because um, the way my job's going, I'm going to end up, I'm working seven days in a row this week. So this is Saturday, I just got off work. Uh, my girlfriend's got the kids at this volleyball thing, it's fucking stupid. Um, I've fucking stupid. That's what it is. But they're there, so I was like, ah, I got a little time. I don't know what to do with myself. So, I'm doing this. But we get to this uh, place and I did snap a couple pictures. I'll go over what I found. Uh, the most interesting thing I found is these, but I also saw a PS1 controller, not the DualShock. Um, the basic one for $9.00. Uh, saw a Sega Genesis six button arcade stick for, I think also nine or ten dollars, and I, I thought about it, didn't get it. A third party Super Nintendo controller, it was the clear plastic shell, um, tight, I don't know, it's ugly, didn't care for it. They had like three sports ball Super Nintendo games, three sports ball Sega Genesis games, and like five bucks a piece on each of those sports ball games. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. They're probably thinking, oh, video games are worth money. They're not. Not when they're sports ball games. Um, saw some arcade machine marquees in a box. Saw the backboard 
of a uh, pinball table, you know, where it like lights up and has like the score and shit. Disco Fever, I believe. Um, what else did we see? Saw a third uh, plug and play, which is near where I f saw these. Like, whenever I see a video game, I then investigate their booth uh, more thoroughly because, like, ah, they've got video games in the area or evidence of, so let's look. And then I found these items. Um, I found another booth that had the stack of PS2 games, like five or six, had Devil May Cry 2, wanted $5.50 for it. Um, I'll pass. Like I, I would have, I would, I've got Devil May Cry. I intend to play it one of these days. I'd like to have Devil May Cry too, but you know, really, why don't I just get the HD version? You know, and it'll probably cost not that much more. Yada yada, whatever. Um, I would have taken Devil May Cry two in the condition it was in for a dollar, <clears throat> but they wanted much more than that. Um, and then we found these. And it was sitting like this. Um, Nintendo Power Strategy Guide. And this is for the four-player extra. Team up for powerful fun. Play to win strategy straight from the pros at Nintendo Power. So, you see football mans on the front of this, and it's mostly sports ball games. But I do have an NES satellite, and... I'm not going to play this game for a player, but uh, we've got Gauntlet 2. It's got a strategy guide for Gauntlet 2. And then, let's see, I know where it is. Then, this is what I really wanted it for, was the strategy guide for Swords and Serpents, which I probably won't play for a player either, but I'll probably play it two player, and now i got a strategy guide. Uh, one of the first episodes of Vag, one of the earlier episodes when I was still just talking hands in front of the camera, um, I bought the manual for this game so that I could play with my girlfriend. It actually told us that, you know, you could aim high at the head or down low at the body and, like, all that stuff. Um, but there's some cool tips here, like four-player extra strategy, share the burden. Each player should be assigned a special task. One, the leader. Two, the map maker. Three, the message keeper. Four, the monster tracker. Who keeps track of monster strengths? Holy shit, doesn't that sound fun? A first person dungeon crawling NES RPG with four people, and you got like your nerdy friend Brian making the map. Doesn't Brian sound like the kind of asshole that you'd like? Hey, you gotta make the map, Brian. And, uh,. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why, where that came from. The message keeper, the person that writes down all the in-game hints and clues. Um, that sounds like the kind of shit I would do. I do that anyway. Um, but obviously I want to also be the leader. So I thought that was interesting. Um, follow your leader. One member of the party must lead the others on their quest, controlling the direction of travel. How you choose is up to you, but choose wisely. So you can choose which of the four players is going to be the one piloting the movement throughout the dungeon. Um, I don't know. Like, yeah, it would help to keep a map. The game does have an auto map um, that appears on screen as you go through the dungeon. And we made it, like, at least a level two. Like, we played a little bit into the game. But this only goes up to level five, and I believe there's 16 levels in the game, so I was like, eh, oh man, did I... Seven fucking dollar he dues for this. But here it is. I wanted it. And then they had the Southern Nintendo Power Strategy Guide for Ninja Gaiden 2. Now, I believe the other one had a poster, but someone uh, acquiesced it. So we got this Ninja Gaiden 2 poster. Then on the back... We got all this secret information about ninjas. Now this I'll take a picture of with my camera and it'll be easy and because I'm copying shit from the camera I'll just move that on over <coughs> and show you some of these things because there's some ridiculous stuff on this uh, informational quick guide to ninjutsu. For example, and this is the best one, 
Through their detailed study of nature, the ninja learned many techniques that assisted them during their missions. Careful observation of his surroundings gave the ninja helpful information. Since these techniques are based on the unchanging principles of nature, they can still be used today. The cat's eye clock. Or you could look up, <laughs> see where your shadow's at. <coughs> um, the sensitive eye of the common cat dilates differently depending on the time of day. By looking at a cat's pupil, the ninja could tell approximately what time it was. The only thing preventing the ninja from inventing the first wristwatch was the cat's refusal to stay on his arm. Like, it, it takes away from the rest of this ninja information, the ridiculousness of that fucking claim. What if the cat's inside? What if it's nighttime? Just uh, see where your shadow's at. Is it high noon? Is the sun going down? Like, come on. Come on, fella. Fucking ninja knowledge. The tree compass. A tree's growth rings, affected by the sun's position in the sky are further apart on the south side of the tree than on the north side. A ninja armed with this knowledge could use a fallen tree in the forest as a compass. Um, I mean, I guess they don't know where the moss grows in Japan. I mean, if they don't have tree moss, I don't know. I've never been in a Japanese forest. Um, I could see this possibly helping you on a cloudy day in a moss-free forest where there happens to be a fallen tree. I'm sure once in the history of planet Earth, someone got pointed in the right direction because of this secret ninja knowledge. Then the rest of it's like, here's their shoes, they didn't wear armor, here's this gay like metal brazier that a lady has, a shuriken, a climbing tool, how to make a ninja mask. That stuff's cool. Um... All the cool things you do with the ninja sword, like using it as a snorkel, the sheath. And then we just got a walkthrough of uh, Ninja Guide in here. So, that is cool. And this was also $7. I forget if I mentioned this. There's a little comic book in here telling you the plot. Um, so this is what I got for this episode of Vag. Very cool stuff. Very glad to get this on the shelf, finally. I want this... This has been sitting on my desk the longest. I want to get this uh, sorted away. And uh, all that jazz, what we got here. I think... It, I don't know. I just... I don't know how I feel about it. Like, this is the most manual you get anymore. Just, like, some information on the inside of the cover. I don't know. I guess it's better than nothing, but... Not by much. So, and that's what I got. Leave a comment telling me what you think. Let me know if you think that's useful informa information telling uh, the time of day based on a cat's pupil dilation. Should you, like, have to assassinate the shinobi <laughs> in exactly uh, the widest width of the cat's eye? That sounds useful. It sounds great to me can't wait to use this information. Um, I wonder if it works when it's cloudy or if the cat's inside. I, who wrote this? Why? Of all the things they could have made up about ninjas, they made up the cat's eye clock. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about ninjutsu. Let me know what you think about Bayonetta and Final Fantasy 2. Which version of Lethal Enforcers is the best? Sega CD, Genesis, or Super Nintendo? I don't know. I think I've only ever played the Sega CD version. Thanks for watching.